What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily. So I've had my TCL 10 Pro for exactly 10 days now. And for this review, since we seem to be sticking with the 10 theme, I wanted to talk about 10 things I like about this phone and a couple things that I feel like maybe could have been done better. There's a lot I wanna go over in this review, so I won't waste any more time. Let's go ahead and see what this phone has to offer. First off, I think the 10 Pro is a good looking phone made from the right materials. No, it doesn't have the shiny faux glass glass back with shimmers and rainbows that seems to be really popular on phones right now, but what it has instead is a timeless design that's subtle yet still conveys a premium feel. With an all metal frame contoured and curved along the edges, the device feels heavy but also thin and comfortable enough in the hand. And the smooth back with that gradient finish and slight sheen I think is premium enough without going overboard. It probably most closely resembles the Samsung Galaxy S9, just without that delicate glass back. If you liked that phone, you'll like this one. The second thing I like about this phone is really a collection of things. It's all the hardware features you can find when you look around the device. The 10 Pro has a regular old headphone jack at the top, which is great. And TCL also included an IR blaster as well, which you never really see anymore. For TCL, a company that's most known for their TVs, this makes sense. It's nice being able to control your TV or other entertainment related stuff with your phone and I think in a way it sort of allows a TCL TV owner who becomes a TCL smartphone owner to become even more engulfed with the brand and ecosystem I guess you could say. The third thing I really like about this phone sort of has to do with the hardware once again but I thought it deserved its own spot because TCL did something that other companies even still sometimes refuse to do. The 10 Pro has a dedicated smart key on the left side and most other brands will use this as a Google Assistant button or Bixby button, and it's usually not remappable by default. With the 10 Pro, not only can you disable it completely if you just don't want to use it, but you can customize it pretty much however you like. A single press can do one thing, a double press can do something else, and a long press can launch even more things. You don't have to use Google Assistant at all if you don't want to. You don't even have to set the button to TCL's own software features. It can be customized to do a whole bunch of stuff. And that flexibility makes this smart key actually useful. Rather than becoming frustrated by an accidental Google Assistant launch, I found myself using the smart key to launch, enable, and disable things I needed in the moment. And I think most people will make good use of this button. The fourth thing on the list of solid features with the 10 Pro has to do with the fast and accurate biometric unlocking options. The phone has an in-display fingerprint reader like most smartphones have nowadays, but the sensor on the TCL 10 Pro I found to be a little better than some others I've tried, especially compared to Samsung's A-series phones. The contact area appears to be a little larger, the phone can more quickly retry my fingerprint if it misses the first time, and I never really experienced it failing more than once. Also, the 10 Pro offers face unlock as well and that too is quite fast. I never even see the lock screen really when I pick up this phone and those two unlocking options paired together are a good fast combination. Number five on the list of positives is this phone's wide array of camera options. Around back, the device packs a 64 megapixel main lens, 16 megapixel wide angle, five megapixel macro, and two megapixel depth sensor. Hardware wise, I have no complaints and the phone packs a handful of decent software features that make good use out of the whole setup. There's 4K video recording at up to 30 frames per second and slow-mo at 960 frames per second. There's HDR, portrait, a pro mode, and a super night mode for low light shooting. There's even enhanced video stabilization and an easy to find way to enable the high pixel shooting mode so that people can actually fully utilize the main lens if they want to, which I know a lot of people don't do because they don't usually know how to change that on other phones. The potential is all there, but the results in my opinion opinion, have some room for improvement. In practice, I think the pictures and videos are decent. They aren't flagship quality, obviously, but I think for most people, it's going to be fine. The most notable characteristic, really, is what the 10 Pro does with the color. The phone kicks the saturation up to 11, and for some shots, it might be the right look, but for average everyday outdoor shooting, things tend to look a little overdone. Skies are really a deep blue, shadows go pretty dark, and the greens of the leaves and the trees 
these almost feel like they've been over enhanced. Besides that, I think there's plenty of detail in every shot, which is great. And I tend to use the 64 megapixel mode to get the most out of it all. And when it comes to videos, the enhanced video stabilization option really does a nice job keeping things still and steady. That's what impressed me the most. And specifically with mid-range Android phones, it's usually image stabilization that falls short. So TCL did a nice job stepping things up there. Back on the list of things TCL did well, number six has to do with the software experience. But TCL's Android experience in general, for really the first time out, is a great setup. There are a number of things they added to make it their own, like a useful sidebar with app shortcuts, a decent looking theme, a good launcher, and enough customizability out of the box. Also, TCL did a great job optimizing their Android experience to make the phone feel fast. It's quick, it's very responsive, and I haven't really had any issues no matter what I do with the phone. In regards to the internal specs, and this is number seven on the list of positives, TCL offers the 10 Pro with six gigabytes of RAM. It's not pushing the limits, but it's plenty for this phone, I think. And looking ahead, that's enough to consider this phone a decent investment to use for two or three years. Similarly, number eight on the list of positives is the storage option. 128 gigs of built-in UFS 2.1 storage is great on its own, but you also have micro SD as well to expand things even further. That's all great, and I think there's plenty of value there. The problem though with the specs is what TCL decided to go with for the processor. The 10 Pro has just the Snapdragon 675 inside. Here are the Geekbench and Antutu benchmark scores with this phone, and you can sort of see what we're working with here. There are plenty of better options out there to choose from. A Snapdragon 700 series should have probably been what they went with, but even an older 800 series from like a previous year, I think could have been shipped with this phone. It's probably the one single thing that holds this device back and makes more tech-focused buyers stray away from it. Fortunately, I don't think it hinders performance. Like I said, the Android experience is great, and when you push this phone a bit with lots of apps or even gaming, there's nothing really that it can't handle. But launch and load times with those graphics-heavy games are a bit too long, and every once in a while the phone might skip a frame. All evidence that a better processor would have been the cherry on top of an otherwise decently outfitted phone. Number nine on the list of positives for this device is a really solid 6.47 inch display. It's an AMOLED panel with a resolution of 2340 by 1080. It packs in 398 pixels per inch, and it's an awesome viewing experience overall. The curved glass isn't for everyone, but I like it. I have no issues with it, and it contributes to the more premium feel for me. And the slim bezels all around give you a nearly 90% screen to body ratio, which means you're basically only ever looking at your content with no other distractions. As the leader in affordable 4K TVs, I fully expected the 10 Pro to offer as good of a viewing experience as possible, and that's exactly what TCL delivered here. I really don't have any complaints. But TCL even took it a step further by throwing in their next vision chipset to enhance the display even more. With this enabled, you get a bright, punchy, colorful enhancement to your content in a similar way to how HD HDR10 boosts things up. Now for me, I ultimately found the enhancements to be pretty good because I like that bright colorful look, but I know that's not everyone's preference. If you want to disable Next Vision completely, and maybe even go the other way with a more natural color profile, you can do that too, and that still gives you a great viewing experience. The main point here with this is just having all that customizability. TCL offers a display that can be tweaked, adjusted, or enhanced for just about anyone. And I think this phone has one of the best screens paired with more software options than I've seen on really any other device. And the final thing this phone gets right is the battery and charging options. The 4500 milliamp capacity battery for me lasts through the day easily, no matter what I'm doing, even with options like Next Vision enabled. Paired with the 18 watt fast charger, I'm juicing up to 75% in less than an hour from zero. There's no wireless charging, which isn't a surprise, but everything else with the battery setup, I have no complaints with. For a vast majority of people, this phone offers just about everything. And I think it was a good, solid effort for the company's first T TCL specific branded phone. There's plenty to like, and I'm excited to see what this company has in store for the future.